Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Ender.io from Minecraft 112. That's right, the long-awaited thing has happened. Ender.io has come to 112, and this is going to be a getting started video on it because Ender.io now currently has an actual early game to it. Instead of kind of like a mid to end game, it, it has an early game. And that's what I'm going to be covering in here. Uh, how you can get started, uh, some of the gates that might prevent you from moving forward, or at least what to aim for. Though I will admit uh, there is no like in-game manual that I've been able to find. If you use JEI or just enough items, you should be able to have a lot of help just by uh, you know sometimes hovering over something. It will actually give you a, a very thorough description, as well as uh, just you know using the U key to find out the uses for things or the recipe key to find the recipes for items. Uh, so let's start off with some of the basics. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got some kind of cobblestone-looking styled Ender IO machines. These are the simple machines. There's three of them. The simple sag mill, the simple sterling generator, and the simple alloy smelter. Uh, as you can see here, if I right click on, let's say, the sterling generator, it will have an area here for its power. And the power system is no longer RF based, though it does, uh, uh, or rather it is compatible with RF power. Uh, it uses instead micro infinity. Now micro infinity is kind of like a uh, for every one of those is about 2 RF, more or less. So it, it's kind of like EU, kind of like uh, Tesla. It, it, it's got its, its own different things going on here. And uh, it, as you can see, it actually has like little rotating blocks going in here. Uh, you can basically access these. They all have similar functionality. As you can see, they all have kind of like this bar on the left, a couple buttons on the right, and then some kind of uh, stuff going on in the middle dependent upon the machine type. Now, starting with the generator, this here will create a power source for you, uh, and you need to put some kind of burnable material in here. Typically, charcoal, coal, wood products, and so on. Uh, it can be put in here and will generate power. Burn rate, 100%. Uh, generating zero uh, micro infinity per tick. And if you look on the right here, you have a configure IO. Now, if I click on that, you can see kind of like this little area of all the blocks that might be touching its face. If you look here, I even have a grass block on the back. And if I look at the side here, uh, it actually highlights the area that my mouse pointer is at. And you can uh, click on those with your, uh, well, right click, I should say. And it can change it to pulling the, uh, the product up here. If you look here, it says pull on the bottom left. You can push items out from it, and you can have it set to push-pull, depending upon the item type. It may or may not work. And then you can always just disable it if you don't want something to connect. And then you can always just set it to none, which is its default. Therefore, I have hopper on top. Nothing is going into it. If I want to change back from this, I just click the button again. And you can always choose this to see everything around it. If you if it's uh, you know a little bit confusing for you, just you know that it, the hopper is on the top, and you don't want this stuff on top. You can then just click through, etc. Uh, now I actually changed that to input. It was actually pulling things out of the top briefly there, and you can see that it is now generating some power. It grabbed from the top. It instantly took an entire stack's worth. There's no issue with that because it's it's pulling from this hopper, even though it has a lever on the back shutting it off currently. So therefore it has a functionality to actually push or pull items to and from the block. Now you can also choose uh, to show recipes, which it shows you, you know, 10 micro infinity to 80 micro infinity, etc. Yeah, you, you've got your different items you can scroll through for the fuel sources. But if you look here, this is the, the important part. This fuel cannot be used in simple sterling generator because it's lava and lava is for the next level up, which I will not be covering this today, but if you look here, you can see that there is a sterling generator and a simple sterling generator. And the simple one is what we're referring to. If I go to the regular one, which is made in a different way, it will uh, require, you know, it can therefore accept lava as well as all the same other sources. And I don't have any modifications I can do with this. I can't, I don't have any upgrades. It's the simple version. So with this, it's generating power. It automatically will generate power to those blocks that are touching the sides. Therefore, if I go over here, this one now has power as well, as does this one on the side. Now if you look, it says max 5 micro infinity here, this one here, 5 micro infinity there. Now this is actually how much it's distributing to either. It will constantly keep on using fuel, so that is something to take into consideration. Just con having this thing being fed coal all the time, it will just destroy your coal. <laughs> 
<laughs> being the, the simple version. So if I, uh, let's start with this one here, the simple sag mill. This is uh, your typical way of kind of ore duplication. If I were to get something like uh, some iron and uh, iron ore, put this in here, it will then process it very slowly. If you look here, the progress bar is moving. It's not increasable in speed or anything like that because this is the simple version. As before, you have your simple uh, configurations that you can change and see on each of the sides, etc. And of course, your recipe list. And if you see, there's actually a little area here for some other items that can be used. That is for the regular sag mill, not the simple version. So you cannot actually speed this up in that fashion. But this will allow you to somewhat early game start generating some or duplication possibilities uh, and once this thing is done here it will show you that now i should show you some of these recipes but first i'm going to show you the last one of the three before i do that but if you look you get iron powder and then if i take that iron powder over here to the simple alloy smelter it does not work because it is a simple alloy smelter this is an alloy smelter by default it actually will not uh, perhaps at this current state at least uh, generate things like a regular furnace. So you will still have to use a regular uh, Minecraft furnace to start things with, but you can make alloys, which will take a little bit of time. If you look at the progress bar over here, it's a little bit easier to see than uh, any kind of this progress here, which, there you go. You can now just start seeing it. It is very slow, but it can make some different kinds of, uh, well, alloys. And that is where a lot of this mod comes in, and a lot of its gating is involved with that. Now, uh, as before, I feel I should mention that, yes, this was turned off. I turn it on, and it should automatically drop things in. Even if I turn the top to none, it will still deposit things in. So there you go. You can see some, some extra coal has been dropped in. So if you have it set to none, you can use normal vanilla mechanics to still import things into it. Uh, but otherwise... The recipes for these are fairly basic. The simple sterling generator It's going to be a furnace some uh, uh, stone bricks, simple machine chassis, and some iron gears, plus, of course, a piston. Now, if I go over to the simple alloy, or actually, let's do the sag mill next. That one is iron ingot, simple machine chassis, stone compound gears. And then, of course, the alloy smelter is going to be more furnaces, a simple machine chassis, and some stone compound gears. Now, these gears, they start off with wooden gears which is just a bunch of sticks. You don't have to make the wooden gear. You can actually just go straight to a stone compound gear because it has two recipes. You can take a wooden one and put stone around it, or you can just make it all in one. I recommend you just go for that one so you don't have multiple crafting things. But iron gears, if you go with that, it requires iron nuggets, iron ingots, and grains of infinity, which is a new uh, ingredient and mechanic that's part of um, Ender.io. And let me just put the fire out there but uh, the idea is you need to go down to bedrock I, I do have a door over here which will go all the way down there but I figured you know what it's just easier to do up here where it's very nice and bright and you will need uh, a flint and steel of some sort you light yourself on fire some kind of you know area of bedrock not not things around it just bedrock and then you wait that's that's right you just kind of wait and eventually you get something like this, these here. The little grains of infinity will pop off. Now, if it goes out, there's a chance it won't actually be there. I have one in my inventory. I'll get rid of that. I still have one back here. There you go. So you have about a less than 50% chance. I find it actually maybe slightly more than that to get these things. They will eventually stop burning. And if they are currently in a, uh, a flaming area, they will tend to not burn too quickly. They don't like instantly burn up. Uh, they might have like a few seconds worth uh, or, or a second's worth before you can pick them up. So if you have an entire large area lit up so you can get a bunch of these, then you can actually obtain those. It's, it's pretty neat. It, it gives you that. You can actually put that inside of a simple sag mill, like so. And I will show you what that comes up with in a moment. But it's going to be a very useful material and a gating mechanic. Now, the use for this is in a lot of different machines, as well as the iron gear, the basic capacitors, some different reinforced obsidian, and, and so on. These will be items that you may need a whole bunch of. And yes, you can just do this manually. You can also set it up in somewhat of an automated fashion. Now, while that's grinding up, uh, I will show you a little bit of some automation if you would like. This is probably the cheaper one, but less effective. This one is going to be much more effective, but also more mid-game. 
So we have an observer block. Yes, I realize I said uh, it's going to be easier. Well, the recipe for this requires another course, which means a run to the nether. Most of Ender IO is going to require some kind of quartz <laughs> involvement, as well as like lots of gold and iron. So you're going to need a lot of materials, but it is it is definitely a, a mid-game styled mod at least. Uh, then I've got up here a dispenser that is currently facing down with a flint and steel in it. I also have a piece of redstone. Now if I put one up here and I then take my own flint and tinder or flint and steel and start this, I can put that in there and over time as the block gets updated, this thing will light this. Now the problem is, is that sometimes it will light more often than it should, thus reigniting this block and never actually burning out. Now that's just less common that it will burn out and eventually give you one of those grains of infinity. But if you notice there, that shot out and went over to this, a vacuum chest, which a vacuum chest is made with some iron ingots, some kind of chest of choice, and a pulsating crystal, which is made from pulsating iron. Pulsating iron is made in an alloy smelter from ender pearls and iron ingots, which you can make in the simple alloy smelter. It's not exactly the easiest thing to make, but it is very nice because it can, if I show the range, vacuum any loose items in the world that enter that area. I can also increase that range up to a maximum of six, down to a minimum of zero, if I so desire. I'll hide that range. You can also change it to redstone mode and so on. Add in a filter so that it can pick up certain things or not, etc. Now, this is, like I said, low key. You can set it and forget it eventually. It will burn through your flint and steel. You'll probably end up with maybe like five, maybe ten uh, pieces of grains of infinity if, if you're lucky. I would say five is probably what you're going to end up with. Now, if you want a much more effective way of going about this, then I would recommend you make a block detector. Now, block detector is made with some more advanced materials that I'm not really going to get too much into today, but uh, machine parts, which are iron ingots around a machine chassis, not the simple version, a machine chassis, which I will cover how to cover that, uh, how to make that shortly. But it also will require some dark pressure plates, which also requires dark, ste dark steel ingots, which is one of the main ingots of the mod. I will cover the ingots shortly. Uh, but you just need a piece of redstone on top. I put that there just to show that if you look on the top left, it says power 15. It actually stops putting power out when you place it on top. And this has a regular flint and steel inside. So once that goes out, it will reignite. So it's a little bit more effective because this one here is getting several different block updates from the fire. Uh, and this one here will only get the one block update when the fire goes out. Therefore reigniting and getting you a lot more. Now I have two grains of infinity. We just got one from over there. Did that get another one? No, not yet. And it does take a bit of time for this to work. So that, that's the other thing, if you need to do this. Personally, I just think, there you go. It just, it just did that. You got a grain of infinity. You got another one from over here. It's working through the flint and steel as well as this one. But, I mean, there's just two different ways of doing this. And I, I find that, personally, I just manually go down and just, you know, light up the room. It's probably a lot simpler because you're not really going to need a ton of these to start. You might need them later, and perhaps you might want to, you know, build some kind of contraption like this. But that, that, that should work just fine. Now... <laughs> Going to some of the other things here, we've got tons of different little compounds and ingots. Uh, so with this, I will, oops, I just grabbed that one there. Organic green dye. Let me put that back. There we go. Uh, recipe for these different dyes, we've got organic green, organic brown, organic black. And what these represent are three different ways of making your normal Minecraft green, brown, and black dyes. How would you make them? With an alloy smelter of some kind of clippings and trimmings and a piece of slime uh, or an egg, which is rather useful. And then the brown is going to be the same way. So instead of coca beans, you could make twigs and prunings uh, and then toss it in with slime and mushroom stew or, or one of the two. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your black, which requires uh, like charcoal or coal powder, I believe, is the recipe for that one. Uh, yeah, coal powder right there, as well, and then egg and slime are your other options. So therefore, a chicken and some coal, you could make black dye, uh, or brown dye with twigs, and green dye with clippings. And how do you make those? Well, your sag mill has lots of recipes. Look here, I made infinity dust, which I will grab that and bring with me. But the uh, recipes here, uh, you can make, like, flour from seeds, and then use that 
to make bread. So one wheat can get you a loaf of bread, which is absolutely wonderful. You can grind up stone and stuff like that. But if you continue through things like this, leaves and dead bushes and stuff, possibly giving you clippings and trimmings and twigs and prunings, which is where you get those. Basically, any kind of plant matter has a possibility of giving you these types of items as a byproduct. And yes, you'll see that there are multiple versions of these. That's because this one, there's a 15% chance and a 10% chance. So you've got a 15% chance of getting one and then a 10% chance of getting a second one on top of that. Um, 80, 60, and so on. So you've got different percentages, and it all depends on how you upgrade your regular sag mill, if you so desire. But in, like I said, in this case, I'm just showing you the simple ones. Now, you'll notice I have infinity dust. I am in creative mode right now, so I have infinite uses of this. But it is more of a mob spawner and or lightning generator. So if I use this in the open with the sky, I click it there, it will start creating a little bit of a cloud, and then it will be struck by lightning. So there you go. Now, if I if I grab a creeper, I'm sure that there are people like, oh, can I make can I make creepers get zapped with this? Well, not not exactly. Um, I mean, you see there, I just clicked on it. The reason being is that when when you actually place one of these, <laughs> it will create a da a damaging cloud, uh, which in this case, is injuring our little creeper buddy here. So let's go down into a darker area where I can show this off much better. So here we are underneath a large part of this structure. And if I right click down here, you'll notice that it starts creating these weird particle cloud effects that start spreading a little bit. They have a limited lifetime. They will spread out to maybe like two, three, four, five different styles of each one, and they'll eventually expire. So this is nothing permanent, but you can use it to generate mobs. Now in this area, there isn't a lot going on. It's very small and limited, but you can just, you know, click a whole bunch of these all over the place, spam a whole bunch of them, and they'll start generating a lot of mobs. Now the thing is, they do hurt you. They will fling you. They will cause all sorts of bad things to happen. So the, these things are not really to be messed with too much. Now, if you do need to get rid of these, you can place a block down where they are, and they'll go away. But if you notice, we're getting endermites, we're getting, uh, you know, silverfish. They generate endermen quite frequently, as well as the endermites. So this is a really good source of getting some of the uh, endermen for your ender I.O. There we go. As you need to. So it, it's kind of a mob spawner but it also has all sorts of really wild and random effects. Once again, if any of these clouds gets out into exposed daylight uh, to the sky, it'll be struck by lightning and eliminated. So coming back up here and kind of summing up the last of the things that might hold you back, uh, we've got uh, our different, oops, I just grabbed one of those ones there, our different ingot types. Now we've got uh, conductive iron, energetic alloy, pulsating iron, vibrant alloy. These are all kind of ways that you can progress with power uh, because there are power conduits that you can make with these they will progress as you go on uh, there's simple you know iron and redstone for the first energetic is going to be gold redstone and glowstone uh, and then of course you've got your pulsating which is going to be iron and ender pearl which i mentioned earlier with the uh, creation of that that block over there and then of course your vibrant alloy which is going to be uh, some energetic alloy plus an ender pearl. So as you can see, there is a need for ender pearls, and there's also a way to obtain them with your little uh, infinity, uh, uh, grains of infinity, rather. Now, on top of that, there are even more ingots. This mod is filled with ingots. It is very similar to the old school ender IO, but it does have some definite changes. First and foremost, I should say, there's also enderios, which you can make with ender pearl powder, milk in a bowl, and they're part of a balanced breakfast, yes details to follow. Anyway, uh, you have your redstone alloy ingot, which is more or less used for uh, redstone creations. You can make it with some silicon and redstone. And of course, silicon is made by grinding up uh, clay, uh, redstone, or different kinds of sand uh, in a smelter, and you might get it as a, a potential byproduct uh, when you grind those up. And then, of course, you have one of the most important ones, electrical steel ingots. These here are the building block of most of your machinery. But it's iron, coal powder, and silicon, which coal powder is generated uh, being ground up 
in a sag mill from coal, of course. And it makes electrical steel ingots, which can be used to make, uh, if you look through here, tons of different machines and objects in Ender IO, which is very key. Now, of course, who can have Ender IO without dark steel? And dark steel is, as before, uh, iron ingot, coal powder, and obsidian, and it is uh, useful for making most of the tools and armor and a, a fair few uh, number of uh, machinery or parts, in this case like a Killer Joe, uh, a few of the machines, but not necessarily all of your basic uh, processing ones. And you can see you've got your different uh, weapons and items and tools that you can make here. And then, of course, you've got your solium, which is more a utility ingot, uh, which it's, once again, it's soul sand and gold, and it, it can be used for making a few items, primarily your specialized uh, mob-style ones, weather, etc. So these, these are like a more specialized machine type ingot that it's used for, but each one of those, I'm sure, is going to be used in most, if not all, of people's uh, styles. And, of course, who can forget... The levers. There are self-resetting levers in Ender IO, which if you look, you've got your regular standard vanilla Minecraft lever, self-resetting lever after five seconds, which requires a regular lever and redstone. Then each subsequent one requires just another piece of redstone. That's 10 seconds, 30, one minute, and five minutes. What do they do? Well, this one here, it opens, and then after five seconds, it will close. There you go. Pretty good. It's very simple. It allows you to get inside of a door without it uh, closing before you can get through it because you, you glitched on the door or something like that. So, <laughs> But here is where uh, you're going to want to progress into the next one, your organic machine powder coating. And that's made from organic green dye, lapis lazuli powder, which is just lapis being ground up again in a sag mill, organic black dye, and quartz powder, which is quartz being ground up in a sag mill. Basically, all this stuff is being ground up in some way or created from other methods, which like an organic green dye, as you see, you know, made from slime and egg with the clippings. But the use for this, the organic machine powder coating, is to make a machine chassis. And this is your gateway into the regular machines, which are heavily upgradable and customizable. If you look here, you can see we've got eight pages of all the more metallic looking styles and interesting things that you, you can uh, potentially make, including machine parts, which can be used to make further machines as well. And that is just the beginning. Uh, don't forget there's also different glassed styles, fused quartz, which is actually going to be uh, made with nether quartz, four of which, or a block, will make you one. And it's blast resistant. The default is white. You can also color each of the different glass types. Then you've got dark fused quartz, which uh, if you look here, it actually keeps the area dark underneath. It does not let light through. You've got enlightened fused quartz, uh, which actually is this one here. If uh, if I turned the night off, it would actually emit light. So it's a, like there's a torch and glass in the same block. As you can see, they do have connected textures. And of course, there's uh, the quite clear glass styles of each as well, which are much, much cheaper. Uh, quite clear glass is made just regular glass goes in and quite clear glass comes out, therefore allowing you a glass pane of, of a type, though it is not blast resistant. For regular glass needs, uh, blocking light and of course emitting light so that you can have lit up windows as well. And that pretty much will sum up for my little getting started and intro into Ender IO. Uh, there is plenty more to come with this wonderful and fantastic mod that everybody has been eagerly awaiting. Thank you once again, uh, mod devs, for making such wonderful progress and eventually getting this ported out for us and yourselves to all play with. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others if you think that they'll enjoy this content too. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.